my pleasure to present uh, Chris Halls and Renee Engelhardt, who will be uh, talking about openoffice.org in Debian. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, it's nice to see so many people. We wondered who would come along. I mean, uh, Open Office is very popular among users, but at a conference like this, there's not so many people who are interested. Um, this is the Debian Open Office team. None of these people work full time for, on Open Office. Well, Rene does a little bit in his day job. I work a little bit in my day job, but um, mostly we do uh, stuff in our spare time. So these two people are the people who process all of the bug reports and the packages, make the packages and so on. And I don't know how many of you have tried to build Open Office. Four, five, okay. Did anyone actually succeed? Oh, well done. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, and you, how long did it take you? I don't remember that. Oh, I think it was overnight. Overnight, okay. Um, but yeah, just uh, packaging is a big job and um, then as Debian maintainers are also expected to coordinate with Upstream, who are about 60 developers and uh, are also not really into the same type of free software as we are, um, most of them being at Sun. They just have a different view of the world. It's like if you go up to, uni uh, to a Windows user and ask him you know, some question, why don't you script something in like... And, um, it's the same thing if we ask them, well, why are you writing this in Java? And they're just like, well, Java's quicker, and what's the problem? It's free. And uh, so we've got quite a lot to do. Free hmm? beer. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got quite a lot to do. And uh, I, I do actually wonder sometimes whether, whether the maintainer field should be Debian Open Office team, because we often get mails like, could the team do this, and maybe the team would... Um, uh, would like to look at this, and we're like, we don't have time. We're just trying to, um, we're trying to keep the packages up to date. Just keeping them up to date is a big job. So uh, at the moment, current status bugs 321 outstanding, and this this is climbing the whole time. Um, okay, so that's the bad side of of, of um, our job. Um, let's tell you a little bit about Open Office 2. Everyone's probably wondering when's it coming out. Well, so are we. Uh, Open Office 2, well, it was originally supposed to be out in March, April this year, and it's been put back for various reasons. There was supposed to be one beta, and, well, it was really more like an alpha, and so there's talk of another beta coming out, and, well, there's no release date yet. Um, but this is a time when you can actually test uh, Open Office 2 and find out what problems there are before it actually goes stable. Uh, Renee's been doing most of the packaging over the last few months, and, oh, and Matthias as well. Matthias is a uh, Ubuntu um, maintainer, and he's, he's helped us quite a lot with um, OpenOffice. Um, we, uh, where are we? So we've got packages in Experimental. Um, but not in unstable because the FTP masters aren't so keen on us having two versions of OpenOffice in unstable because it's quite big, in case anybody hadn't noticed. Um, Mainly because of the sheer size. The actual um, up to date version in experimental is uh, source and steps 400 megabytes. One upload. So. I guess it's understandable why you don't want two packages of, the, of them. And then the auto build also. Yeah, and it grows with every version. Keep adding more and more stuff. It's another difference in mindset. These guys work regularly with Solaris and with Windows, and you don't have all of the nice package um, libraries together. So what do you do to make it easier for developers? You lump everything together. And like, there's loads of Debian developers go to me, why on earth is there, <coughs> what the, what's the biggest things? Um, was there a G-Lib in there at one point? There was at one, some point, but 
just big libraries. We do actually patch them out in the packaging. That's one thing that when I yeah. and I have been doing. Um, as long as it's possible, it's done. There is some um, some libraries that are heavily patched inside the tree. Uh, ICU is megabytes, and you can't can't build it out because it's so heavily patched. If the ICU maintainer uh, wants to apply this patch to the old version, maybe, but it's not happened yet. And upstream wants to resolve that problem, but for a later version. <laughs> yeah, upstream have got a lot to do as well. Uh, Sun have got different priorities to us, so they're putting in new features which may or not be interesting for us. A uh, new database component is pretty good, apart from the fact that it is Java. Um, they are putting more and more Java into OpenOffice, as you've probably realised. Um, thankfully, GCJ has, is getting better and better, and now with version 2 of OpenOffice and version 4 of GCJ, we can actually compile OpenOffice with GCJ. Unfortunately, that makes it start up even slower, but we're hoping to be able to use the um, shared library, what is it, SO building of um, GCJ to actually pre-compile stuff, um, but there's some problems with the current version, so we'll have to see whether we can get that in and working. Um, but yeah, that's been sort of a lot of hot discussion. There's a, uh, Richard Stallman, for example, has actually been mailing regularly on, our, uh, on the JPK list at Upstream trying to sort this out. So at least people have been taking in an interest there and uh, that's moving forward. Um, as far as the packaging itself goes, we have just been uh, doing version 2 recently. There's a lot of bugs still to go and uh, one of the things that we've done is we've started moving over to use Alias to actually make it easier for people who aren't Debian developers to get involved. A year ago, at the last DebConf, I stood here and talked to people about how to help with triaging bugs. We did get some help, but it's gone back to being just when I am myself, really. Um, there is, although OpenOffice itself is a big package and you use a lot of hardware to build it, there are still a lot of things that would help us. All of these bugs here, uh, we, try, we try to work on the very serious severity ones, but if you go down to the normal severity, there are just pages and pages of reports by OpenOffice users, and generally OpenOffice users, um, on average, aren't used to writing bug reports as much as might be for a more sophisticated um, development type of package. Um, so we get really basic reports and you have to spend time with every single one of these going back and forth with the user to work out what exactly is the problem and uh, how to reproduce it. And just somebody who could help us with that, for example, just looking at some bugs, uh, that would help us get the countdown. There's a, there's a lot of really low-hanging fruit in these uh, stuff that can be some of them may even not apply anymore. Yeah. Um, there is some bugs reported against 110 or even 103. I am yeah. fairly sure some of them don't apply anymore. But uh, to check that is, so, is partly time consuming and the yeah. packaging has to go on. And so it's yeah. not so easy to. Um, find out whether to close the box and sometimes even the submitters don't answer anymore so <laughs> yeah yeah just uh, somebody going through and working out which submitters have timed out would help I mean look at yeah, this one version 110 there's quite a big chance that's been fixed already yeah so this buff is actually a recruiting buff <laughs> no not really um, do you have any questions about what we've talked about so far? Are there any of you who um, have some time and would like to help us improve the OpenOffice packages? Ah, oh, great. Um, I wonder how many of you actually use the OpenOffice packages? 
that's uh, well, two in the two in the room full is a lot higher than you'd normally expect. I mean, we we do have millions of users, and uh, most people don't really um, help us, and they also are under the impression that there are loads of people beavering away at Debian to make these open office packages. Does anybody have any suggestions about how we can actually get this message across better? Has anybody looked at the packaging, the project, the documentation? Well, I was wondering, um, about this, the specific thing, the dictionaries, uh, there was a thing I did some packaging for, not in, in Debian, but I did the Debian package for it, which uh, was a fairly easy dictionary installer for OpenOffice, which would be installed either into the you know, user or into the uh, home folder. And um, now the dictionaries sort of uh, trickle in via normal Debian packages. And um, that tool actually has a lot more dictionaries available than the uh, the, uh, the Debian packages, and, and plus I, I suppose it would be easier to just package that instead of packaging every single uh, dictionary. Uh, how would one go about suggesting such a thing? Uh, because obviously uh, no, nobody wants to uh, piss people off and uh, suggesting to remove all the, the dictionary packages and installing that thing. So how, would, how would one go about uh, suggesting this in a, in a reasonable manner? Talking about the actual technical issues and trying to establish why um, why we've actually got the situation that we have, and I can explain it to you a bit. The original upstream didn't have any installer at all. The, the MySQL dictionaries do predate that. Um, the advantage of having dictionaries as packages is, means that it's totally integrated with the rest of the system. But as you say, it doesn't scale. We don't have time to look after every language, and really, we would prefer somebody to do to do, uh, to look after their language. And um, since we had my um, I spell and A spell dictionaries, it seemed reasonable enough to say, "Here's the framework. Go off and make your dictionaries." But as you say, they're not all done. Now, if you've got a sorry, Andrew, just the, about the dictionaries. Um, something that would make it easier to package individual languages would be if there was a framework which was just a single dictionary. The source package for dictionaries is a whole lot of dictionaries. That it creates yeah. individual Debian packages, which is fine if you've only got one maintainer, but if you've got one maintainer per language, it, it becomes difficult. I, I like being able to install a language support mm. through apt-get. The point is that uh, MySQL dictionaries can easily be built on top uh, from the iSQL dictionaries. So what the most packages in Debian do is not to take the zips from the upstream side. They uh, convert the iSQL dictionaries into MySQL dictionaries. And so the maintainers are of course the favorite because it comes from the normal iSQL source package. Am I right in thinking you were asking, is there like a template for a single mm. dictionary? Yes, and it's about, we've had it for about three years, oh. and it's in the CBS. Um, but that's when it says you can also build them from um, iSQL dictionaries. If you build from the, from the zip files, you can get, there's the template. You can use the template, or you can use any other a MySQL dictionary which is not built from an ISO source package. But can we actually look at the idea of a central installer? Uh, the main drawback of it is that you don't have it integrated with your package database. How have you gone about uh, solving that? How, what well, do you, you do? Can, you can, if I remember correctly, though, it was some time ago. Uh, that if I remember correctly, um, you could give it sort of preceded. Uh, so I suppose you could on installing that package, you could uh, let it choose by that point or whatever, uh, of, of a set of uh, pre-seeds uh, tied in with the locale or whatever the language you use on your system. And then um, it would obviously on first run automatically fetch those. It's a little, it's a little hackish, I suppose, but uh, might be easier 
uh, and supporting with getting all the packages. Okay, so it's something which you're downloading a bit like MSTT core fonts or something, yeah, is it? it is, yeah, although the dictionaries are GFSG free. Okay, um, and when you, you actually had that as a packaged? Yeah, I, I packaged that one for some version of it, but I, I did not upload it all. Because obviously the framework was, was already there, you had, you had your packages in it. Wondering if you if you only oh because I was also under the misconception that there was a, an open office team working on it and uh, it might it might be a, a first step to uh, alleviate some of your work. Mm. Well, by the way, on my system there was no. Yeah, that's a good question. It is asked, does it conflict with my spell packages? What do you do with the dictionary list? Well. Again, like it was some time ago, I'd have to look into that again. But from what I remember, uh, even running it as as I had to adapt some paths because it was written for Red Hat systems or whatever. But um, I don't think I got any comments. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look. Yeah, uh, what I meant, there's a single dictionary dot list file, and um, you need to maintain that file. Are you generating it automatically? Uh, no, it comes with the uh, with upstream. It's a. Uh, I actually don't do it. That's the problem. That's one of the things that we sorted with the MySQL packaging. There is a um, a policy for that in place in the in the uh, dictionary's common package, um, which uh, says the policy for iSpell, iSpell, and uh, so on packages. And to, in Debian, you just provide an info file for a script. Very right. It in that info file, what this dictionary list int entry should contain, okay. and every post in on, and post the end of the packages should call a script, update open office tickets, and this script regenerates the dictionary list from scratch, okay. preserving the uh, eventual modifications, but creating it from scratch, so that. Every package installation has the new stuff registered. Yes, so um, we're certainly open to it. And well, I'll, I'll have a look over the things. Okay, great. Have a look at how the MySpell dictionaries work with the um, updating the dictionary list. And yes, why not? Does anybody think of a reason why we shouldn't do that? Given, given that it does work and doesn't use, it isn't too hard to adapt. I suppose you, you're changing the user interface to how you install your dictionaries. It's a DevConf interface, though, is it? Uh, no, it's a GDK interface. Okay. I'm not sure. About Sorry, Matthias. Our non-interactive installs also DevConf. Okay, non-interactive via command line somehow. Not sure about that. I'm not sure. I don't from memory. I don't think so. Okay. But yes, please look at it. It's something that I've been thinking about on and off, this sort of data type of package um, where you've got masses and masses of different uh, files for per language or whatever. And uh, it does end up not scaling perfectly when you're integrated into the package database. Uh, as you say, when there's, uh, it, when there's uh, more people making these dictionaries than the package maintainers can keep up with, and where it's something regular like that, then yes, maybe we can find a better way of doing it. Did somebody uh, look at replacing my spell with a spell? Did we look at, somebody look at replacing replacing my spell with a spell? Um, yeah, now, the reason why uh, a spell could not be used on all platforms is because it doesn't exist on, <coughs> on Windows, I would guess. I'm not sure, but it was a platform and compatibility problem. Um, and efficiency as well, if I remember right. There were some technical reasons for not being able to use spell everywhere that you could use OpenOffice. Um, I do remember there, there was an older implementation that used to use spell, but that was unmaintained. Um, I don't think there's any real technical issues 
with uh, using a spell, um, but it would need somebody to maintain it. So it's just lack of manpower. A spell wasn't a solution for all platforms. That's, I think that's how it went. Do you know any more? No. That's almost everything. The licenses are compatible, so if anyone wants to write a plugin for uh, a spell, it's no problem. Uh, but the upstream won't do it, and we don't have time anyway, so anyone can do it using the RP. I just wondering if it's still uh, Just get that run. I don't think it's okay. No. No, there used to be there used to be an old implementation, but I guess it, I guess it got removed. Okay. Any more? Right. What was I talking about? GCC four. Thanks to Matthias's work, uh, we've got a lot closer to being able to use GCC four. Um, and they said it builds on i386, but not on other architectures yet, is that right? It, um, another version is built on PowerPC2, um, but somehow the way, somehow the, the registration of the components in the office, uh, office installation does, does fail now. Uh, I haven't yet looked. Why? <laughs> because I, uh, I need to get pack packaging more, more finished. Um, I hope with, with the new CTC it goes away. If not, I will have to look. Okay. On other platforms, it's uh, more tricky. Spark didn't build at all, even the uh, 100, uh, 108, which did work on PowerPC and, and i 6 uh, SV90, well, didn't build at all. And AM64 is the history for itself. Okay, we'll come on 64 a bit later. I forgot to put that yeah. in the list, actually. Um, okay, so why why do we need GCC4? The reason is that it has this start of this uh, symbol visibility feature. And why do we need that? Because by turning this on and hiding symbols from shared libraries, you end up with smaller binaries and you end up with a lot faster startup performance. Um, over 60%, I've heard quoted, I haven't actually tested it, and it says that it feels fast when it starts. It's up. subjectively is faster, yes, but I haven't measured it either. Yeah. So that for us is um, something that's quite important to do. I mean, packaging takes higher priority, but uh, as soon as we can actually use that, it will um, make it a lot faster, easier, to, um, quicker to start up. So, yeah. Does 3.4 have also visibility feature? Does 3.4 have the visibility, visibility feature? No. Um, there is a patch which is available for it, um, but it's not in the Debian GCC. Now, Red Hat and Suzu, I think, and maybe others actually applied <coughs> that and have been building OpenOffice with GCC 3.4, um, but we haven't been doing that. We've, well, had 4 not been around the corner, then we might have thought about it. Sun as as they release the official in install sets, do that too. They, do, they use an own GCC out yeah. also. Sun use they patch the their GCC with the with feature and then build with that visibility. Yeah. Actually, at one point, I don't know if they still are, Novell was building um, an internal GCC just to build OpenOffice as part of their packaging. <laughs> so, does this mean that uh, a backport to Sarge is going to be? Impossible or just uh, difficult? Backport of which? Of OpenOffice or two. Two. To yeah. search. To um, search. I, I just yeah, tried. It, uh, it, it will become difficult. Well, it, uh, oh, because of GCC. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. with with those features, yes, yeah. it will be difficult. I well, mean, it, uh, you can build it with C4, but then you don't have the visibility yeah. feature. The main problem with backporting is. Uh, GCJ because uh, if I w want the users to have um, 
to have a field job environment, I would need to backbrush TCC4. So, so Sarge, we got a, of GCJ4. Um, yeah, so exactly I don't want that. Yeah. Sorry. What we did um, for our Woody backports, which was another job that we've been doing, um, was to actually um, turn off features that weren't available. So, for example, uh, I think the font config support was turned off, wasn't it? Things like that. So actually going back to be a more vanilla version of, of uh, the packages. Um, by doing that, we can actually get something that runs on an older one. So that's probably the way that we'll have to go with Sarge. And if people want fast to start up, they'll have to upgrade to Etch. Do you at any point plan to do a Sarge backport? A Sarge backport yourselves? Uh, well, I haven't got one at the moment. It can just be as, as we have time. I have, uh, for the company I work for, I have, um, we have, we maintain some older systems and occasionally I'm asked to do backports for them, at, at which point I also check them in and then if it's not too much um, extra work, I'll then uh, release them um, outside. But yeah, at the moment we don't really have enough time to maintain proper backports, just every now and again. Just uh, as a note, does it would require about backporting TCC video flows? Require about 30 Java packages to be backported? So you end up doing half of the fetch anyway, just to. Just to so 30, ja Java back 30 Java packages would have to be backported for that. that is so there is some. Yes. Yeah, that would be better. We could get etch out quickly. Newly in the um, in the package relationships, there are some Java libraries in the, in, the, in the depends. I would I would need to backport those too. I would need how to do, how to get them built on a SAR system. I would uh, back, need to backport GCC, GCC field four for the uh, Java stuff. On the other hand, you, you could disable the Java stuff. But then you have very interesting bugs in uh, in the office suite. <laughs> so it's not not really uh, that a good idea in an emergency yes, but I would not like to do it because uh, a safe as dialogue who pops up every time you click uh, you press enter is not that funny. On that Java issue, a question. Um, do you, I mean, if I know this correctly, basically at Sun there is a t tendency right now to put an awful lot more of Java than before into Open Office. And do you fear that it might reach a point where it will, will no longer be possible to build anything useful for Debian because we don't have Sun's own GVM ported? No, because, I'm sorry, I should add the question. Do we feel that there might be a point when the open office packages are not really usable because there's so much Java stuff going in there? Uh, I don't think so because we, uh, we have enough influence to be able to say stop your, um, this is going in the wrong direction. It takes time to, to swing some, um, but the distributors, we do work together and have uh, not insignificant voice, um, and also the sun. The idea was that some would only start adding essential Java features once the free JDKs were ready to go. There isn't anybody who's saying we don't care about um, free JDKs. It's more a case of the developers who are implementing the features don't realise the issues. Uh, because they just use internal, their own sun, and uh, there are a lot of them, and it's very difficult to keep up with uh, with uh, them implementing all of the new features. And also there is this expectation that the free JDKs will get better. We did have an agreement with them that they wouldn't implement stuff that, need, that depended on new versions of JDKs, and that does hold... Um, there are some one, there are some features that need 1.4 JDK, but 
they're internally they're on 1.5 already, but they've agreed not to use features. And also, they um, have committed to uh, actually replacing features that use proprietary sound classes. They have done that to a certain extent. Again, it takes a long time, but they are working with us. They've also spent um, quite a lot of time in re-implementing the JEDK loader, the, this uh, JVM framework that actually makes it much easier to load um, a free JDK, well, a different JDK. So, so, such as uh, JCG? Yes, okay. such as JCG, yeah. Okay, uh, should we talk about 64-bit? Um, well, this is a project number, what was it? Uh, 284 in our list to actually implement 64-bit. And uh, do you have a 64-bit machine now? No, nor do I. So uh, it's one thing that we've not actually, pers it's not a, an itch that we've personally had to scratch yet. It's an ongoing effort at Suns and Zeus. Um, they have uh, at least two CVS, uh, CVS branches for this now. Where the, CVS this branches. CVS branches. Where the, where the last uh, last one is still open and not yet not yet finished, um, and Sun apparently doesn't do much work anymore. At least I don't see one. Uh, but some people from the community do now, and um, there is um, some some slow but steady progress. At the moment, it uh, rumors say it should build. It should start, but it should not be uh, able to open documents. But at least it is a focus, it starts and builds. <laughs> I should give you some background to this. Uh, open Office started off as Star Office, and it was originally 16 bit. There's a lot of legacy code, and there are a lot of uh, base classes that are used that make assumptions that you're not expecting to see 64 bit environments. So it's a case of going through all of the code and making sure that things work. You've got conversions from pointers to 32-bit integers, for example, and back again. And it's pretty fundamental. You have to go through and make sweeping changes to types all across the code base. And because it's so big, it, you're, you've got a good chance of breaking stuff. Um, so there are a lot of people that want to do it. And there are people who've been working on it for literally months already. It's just the code base is very big and it doesn't all come quickly. Yeah. How big just to get the uh, feeling of that? The code base? Uh, 8 million lines of code? I think, I think 1.1 is yeah. 76. It's big. Um, one zero used to be 70,000 source files. And there's more now. My laptop here is a Pentium 3 600 megahertz, and it takes over a day nowadays to build open office on this. What, what does the ARM build daemon take? Uh, for 11x, seven days. <laughs> That's actually one thing that we could improve a lot, um, is to split things up a bit and not have to build it as one big chunk. The problem is, is that the current system works really well for the people at Sun, because they all sit on the same network and they have an, a, an engineering department that um, set up servers, they've got NFS mounts with all of the source code, they don't even have to compile it themselves. It's actually, it will compile um, in a really modular way. If you actually look at the, the build scripts, you can um, treat each project separately. It's just that they like to distribute the source as one big, as one big block, 10 minutes. Uh. Wouldn't it be appropriate then for the, either the Debian project or some other open source player or distribution to basically ask IBM and one of the Intel man, well, compatible manufacturer to basically loan us an SSH connection to a faster machine like a 1 or 2 megahertz machine for both of the main architectures as it builds if, if we had hardware sponsoring. Yes. Um, the the problem with a remote machine is that you can't actually hack on the code. Um, 
um, so quick. And as I was saying, you can actually do incremental builds. The build system is fairly sophisticated, and you don't have to build a lot to do incremental stuff. If you're actually working on the code, you don't need to do a lot of building at all. We've even got scripts that will link your active build tree into your um, system install, so that if you're, um, I mean, if you're um, working on a slower machine, okay, you'll have to wait for the few source files that you've modified to compile, but these will then be linked together into a shared library pretty quickly without having recompiled the rest of it, and you can actually get the working out of this working. So it's really the speed of the machine that you're working at that's more important than the speed of the building. I mean, at Debian, we have the build infrastructure. Yeah. Um, once we're ready, we can upload it somewhere and it can go. What has been done is um, the Tinder boxes, for example, to actually repeatedly build stuff. Um, Novell, for example, have uh, sponsored machines. So, um, but if you if you think that's a good idea, um, we'd certainly appreciate more um, help with hardware. So please help us do that. But we just have, don't have time to go and chase do political stuff right. as well as the packaging. Because one example that comes to mind that might be useful that happened recently is when the Mac Mini came out. A bunch of uh, power PC enthusiasts basically paid one to Benjamin Heron Schmidt, the kernel coder, the main kernel coder for PPC. Of course, now we're talking about a fairly affordable piece of, of hardware, about 500 euros. Uh, but basically I'm thinking that what if company basically sent you, let's say for six months, uh, some 64-bit hardware, just to make sure that you got the part up to the perfection, and then at that point we can resume using only the Debian build D system. Yeah, actually, personal hardware, as you're suggesting actually, getting a machine sent, that would help us. We've got one back in here. Um, anybody who's got a power PC machine will probably know this one. We've had, this is our oldest important bug, the top one here and several duplicates that it crashes. It's really easy to reproduce if you try to uh, load the bibliography. But until recently, neither of us have a power PC machine. Rene's now got one, but he's just happy. I just tested with a, uh, with a milestone and it didn't crash anymore. And Oh, lucky? Okay, fixed. Yeah, but, fixed uh, too, the, no. the problem was uh, I, ha I have this laptop since two months or so, and before that I, I wasn't uh, able to test it, test it in any way. So. Yeah, that's maybe an idea, then, machines. Yeah. Did I get through my list? I did the project. Did I mention that? Um, just that we've been moving stuff over to there to make it easier. Uh, to for people who want to um, get involved to actually do something. One thing that we could do with, is there anybody here who would be interested in having um, a trawl through the, our website? It's very out of date nowadays. Yeah. Oops. There's the latest news. Uh, February 2005. Oh, well done. Okay, I haven't done, I haven't done a news up. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but just somebody who's interested in in the status. For example, the two, uh, two old <laughs> status is, is mentioned nowhere. Yeah, that's true, version 2, yeah. Just somebody who's interested in following along a little bit and keeping up to date with what's going on and maybe saying on IRC, what do you think, what do you think, Gary? 2.0 statuses or something, and then just actually uh, writing it up on the website, for example. That would be a big help. We don't really get a lot of constructive help on the mailing list. Um, it's usually bug reports or complaints that the team haven't done this and that. Um, but we we really are open and we would like um, help. Go on. Uh, it would help if the first paragraph of this web page would uh, say that the team is two people because uh, it implies that well some people are working to get open up this running in Linux, Linux Alpha blah yeah. blah, yeah. blah 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 uh, it implies really a lot of people yeah. that, okay that website implies a lot of people that sentence is mainly referred to uh, people who did uh, the architecture part upstream 
But you of course are right. We have more or less the same um, yeah. problem as uh, with the and our security team. Um, where it's also a written that's a big team, but it isn't. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's it in the hackle. But I, I can edit, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm volunteering. Great, thank you. Anybody else volunteering? <laughs> yeah? Great. That's good. Uh, we've had quite a few questions from um, Martin, isn't it? Uh, Q, from, Q Frank is how I know you. Um, on IRC. So, yeah, that'd be great. We're, we are um, on the, we have our own channel and we'll sit there and answer questions when we look. So please come and join us. And thanks everybody for listening. Thank you.